following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools, funded in part by the Virginia Satellite Educational Network. Welcome to Meet the Author. My name is Della Kidd and I'm here at the MTA studio. Joining me today is award-winning author Adrienne Fogelin. She'll be sharing her ideas about the writing process, talking about her books, and maybe explaining this. Many of you know my guests through her memorable characters, Jimmy and Cass in Crossing Jordan, and Anna Ebb and Miss Johnette in Anna Casey's Place in the World. Some of Adrienne's other book titles are my Brother's Hero, The Sword of Sisters, Sister Spider Knows All, and many more. Adrian, thanks so much for joining us today. It's great to be here. It's great having you. Adrian, we've received uh, uh, lots of questions, but first, I want to tell our viewers that we have a great show planned for today. This is a live presentation, and in just a few minutes, we're going to open up our phone lines to welcome your questions. Our number nationally is 1-800-231-6359. If you're calling us locally, you may reach us at 703-978-1636. We've received questions from Florida to Virginia and many places in between, and we're going to get to those in just a few minutes. But first, we're going to start with Roger Kingbury, sixth grade class at Fair Hill Elementary in Fairfax, Virginia. They read Crossing Jordan and Anna Casey's Place in the World, and um, they're curious to learn more about you and your books. So our MTA crew visited the classroom and taped their many questions. Let's take a look at what they wanted to know. Who or what got you interested in writing in the first place? And did you always know you wanted to be a writer? Did any of the books you wrote have a connection with your childhood or your current life? When you travel to different places, does it get you inspired? And if it does, how does it get you inspired? Adrian, they had some great questions. Let's start with the first, which was, who or what got you interested in writing? And did you always know you wanted to be a writer? No, absolutely not. I wanted to be an archaeologist for a while and a fashion designer, the usual stuff. Mm -hmm. But I had a mom who was a writer, and so I lived in a house that was always full of manuscript pages and the sound of someone typing secretly upstairs. My mother gave me the impression that being a writer was a lot of fun, and somehow, over time, that got to me. We're going to take a look at a family picture, and if you'll tell us who, who are in the picture that we're looking at. That's my whole family. That's my father holding my little brother, Chris, and the woman who's staring at you is my mother, the writer. Those two girls, the taller one is me, and the one who looks totally shocked is my sister, Claudia. It sounds like your mom was a, a really great influence for you on writing as well as reading. And I know you started your writing very early with diaries and journals. I sure did, but not voluntarily. <laughs> I'm going to show you my fourth grade diary. This was my gift for a Christmas when my list included dog, 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 and dog. That's what I wanted. That's what I got. And I actually only kept it for six months because I lost the key, which was fortunate because then I could just chuck it under the bed, but I got a pink one the next year. I got a blue one the year after that. And finally, I began buying my own. Here's one from high school. This is what you could get for 15 cents back in the day. So anything, any kind of balance, any kind anything can be a diary or a journal. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And here's the one that follows that little bitty one. And this one was when I was an art student at college. And you'll see it's full of drawings. So if you like to draw, that works too. There's so many different ways we can record our thoughts, but the important thing is to do it, you know? Absolutely. Keep, keep those records. Um, the next question that those students posed was, did any of the books you wrote have a connection with your childhood or with your personal life? They all have a connection with my childhood and personal life. I think most writers do. If you read Crossing Jordan, the mm -hmm. scene in which the baby gets sick was my brother getting mm -hmm. sick when I was babysitting him. That must have been very scary. Very, mm -hmm. very scary. Mm -hmm. And at this point, the kids that you're meeting in my books are actually my neighbors in Tallahassee, Florida. All right, we have a picture that we're going to, who, okay. who are we looking at here? We're looking at a group of my neighbors from around the corner. They've all gotten bigger now, but mm -hmm. you can see we have a very mixed, really nice neighborhood. 
And the next picture, this is one of the girls I used to build the character of Jemmy. This is Brittany. And Brittany, as you can see, is all attitude. <laughs> and so is Jemmy. I can see the connection with the character. And I know that you, you lived on a houseboat in the Florida Keys. And so you, you, you drew on a lot of your experiences in your yes, stories as well. Yes, and my brother's hero, living aboard a boat, mm -hmm. was one of the subjects. I believe we have a picture of a house oh. here. Tell us why this is so important to you. I wanted to show you what the neighborhood looks like, because if you've read a book, you've been to my neighborhood. It's a neighborhood of large old mm -hmm. trees and really small houses, which means that the most common thing that an adult says in my neighborhood is, go outside and play. And that's how I meet kids. That's how they show up in my books. And that's how it was when I was growing up, too. Me we too. played outside a lot. <laughs> the last question the students posed was, when you travel to different places, does it inspire you? And if so, how does it get you inspired? When I travel, I'm almost always going to visit a school. And so what happens is I begin to talk to the kids and I collect quotes from them mm -hmm. and I collect names from them. If I sign a book and your name is really cool, I will write it down to save for a character. One of the names I've got saved right now is Sky Blue Jones. That is a good name. Belonged to a guy. Uh -huh. And he said, when I asked if I could use it, he said, take it. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> One day he'll like it. Well, Adrian, I thoroughly enjoyed reading Crossing Jordan. It, it, um, I, there were a lot of things that I was able to draw on my own personal experiences with as I was reading as well. But for our viewers who perhaps haven't had a chance to read it yet, could you give us a brief overview? Crossing Jordan begins with the building of a fence. And it's being mm -hmm. built because a white family knows that a black family is moving in next door. The fence builder is the father, and he's being helped by his 12-year-old daughter. What happens in the course of the story is that 12-year-old daughter becomes friends with the new girl on the other side of the fence and all the things those two girls have to do to bring their families together. As I mentioned earlier, the Fair Hill students re read Crossing Jordan as a group read aloud in class. So f let's take for a moment and hear some of the questions the class posed. Great. Why did you decide to write a story about African-American prejudice? I heard that you worked at the zoo. Did any of the animals inspire you for the personalities of the characters in Crossing Jordan? In the book Crossing Jordan, what character would you say is most like you and why? Why did you choose running as a sport? Why not swimming or basketball? What part of Crossing Jordan do you enjoy writing the most? Adrian, that first question was, why did you decide to write about African American prejudice? Sometimes a story comes and finds mm -hmm. you, and that's what happened in this case. I had a neighbor named Christina who was nine, she was mm -hmm. white, and she appeared at my door one day really excited and she said, guess what Miss Adrian? we're going to have to move soon because there are getting to be too many black people in this neighborhood. And when I asked her about that feeling, clearly nothing had ever happened to her to make her feel that way, and I realized her father was passing this lesson on to her first time I ever thought about mm -hmm. becoming prejudiced by being taught to be prejudiced. Now in real life the family moved out in the country where they had no neighbors. I think she's the same person she was that day, although she's almost old enough to start her own family now. As soon as she left I began writing Crossing Jordan for children getting that message. And an important message it is. The next student said, I heard that you worked at the zoo. Uh, did any of the animals <laughs> inspire you for the personalities of the characters in Crossing Jordan? I know this has got to be an interesting question for you. I have to tell you, <laughs> I thought I had heard every single question that could be asked. I have never heard that question before. And the short answer is no. But the people I knew at the zoo often come into my books, are often inspiration for the characters. We're looking at a picture of, at, uh, at a zoo. Could you That's tell me, me more about that? That's you. <laughs> okay. That's me and Ray the giraffe. And I'm feeding him leaves. And the picture is being taken by my husband, Ray, who should not be confused with the giraffe. Interesting picture. What was your function at the zoo? Uh, were you a writer at the zoo? I was an <laughs> illustrator at were the you really? zoo. My job was to draw the animals, and sometimes that meant climbing in the cages, and sometimes it meant sitting up against the bars to draw them. It was a wonderful job. Oh, a very unique, interesting mm -hmm. job. Okay. The next question was, in the book Crossing Jordan, what character would you say is most like you, and why? Cass. Definitely mm. Cass. Cass is kind of a tomboy. She's not real fashionable. She's not that sure of herself, but mm -hmm. she really manages to stand up for what she believes in. 
I'm not like Jemmy at all. Jemmy's so cute and cool. Mm -hmm. I'm what like I like Cass. about Cass too is is she she was sometimes unsure of her own decisions and and kind of was hard on herself and on, mm -hmm. on her feelings and the way yep. she thought based on some of the thoughts her parents had yep, as well. That's me. Yep. The next student asks, why did you pick running for the sport? Why not swimming or basketball? Okay, this is a plot question. I needed a sport that the two girls could do by themselves. So basketball wouldn't work. They have mm -hmm. to be able to do this alone. And the other thing is these kids are kind of poor. And so swimming, they would have had to get to a mm -hmm. pool, they would have paid membership. Running was the best sport I could think of for them to do alone and be very competitive with each other. Good reasoning. And the last student question uh, was posed was, what part of Crossing Jordan did you enjoy riding the most? Mm, that's gotta be Boy, a hard one. <laughs> that is a really hard question. Yeah. You know the part where they go to the cemetery at midnight? Mm -hmm. My friend Betsy and I used to do mm -hmm. that. She lived next door to the cemetery. So I remember sneaking out of her house in our pajamas and showing up at the cemetery. That was probably the most fun. Well, they, they certainly asked some interesting questions. They sure they? did. And while our MTA crew was visiting their classroom, they had quite a lively book discussion about Crossing Jordan. Let's listen in to what they had to say. My favorite part is when Jemmy moves um, to cast the neighborhood because that's where the whole story starts. I like the fact that Adrian Fogelin paired up Cass and Jemmy because they are different skin colors, so I don't, I don't, I think that the readers weren't expecting that. My favorite part in the story was when Cass and Jemmy snuck out to go to the cemetery because it was just so intense. It makes you infer a lot. I like Jemmy because she just like spoke her mind and she didn't really care what other people said. I like Jemmy because she's really persistent. I I think that Cass is very brave because she doesn't really care about what people think and she hangs out with Jimmy because not because of her skin tone but how they're like connected. Lou Ann and Andy have some funny scenes when they're together like when she told him not to put on sunscreen to get some color and he got burned. I think it was really a good idea the way she used having the characters reading a book. It was really new and creative the way she thought of two stories and put it into one. My favorite part in the story was in the ending when Cass and Jemmy run the race. Well, my favorite part in the novel is when they're running. I'm really into sports, football, basketball. That has to do all with running, and it has some similarity with me. I like the part when um, Jemmy's mom came to help Missy because the family started to bond together. I would recommend this book to a friend because it really teaches you to not judge people by what they look like, but their personality and how friendship really matters. They had some very great insights about Crossing Jordan. Hopefully, many of our viewers who haven't had a chance to read the book will be inspired to do so now. I hope so. Well, we're here today with author Adrian Fogelin, and we're live. Our phone lines are open and ready to take your calls. Our number nationally is 1-800-231-6359. If you're calling us locally, you may reach us at 703-978-1636. Adrian, we've also received multiple email questions, that, so let's go ahead and get started on a few of those. Sure. Uh, the first that I'd like to ask you about is an email from Lauren from Rockville, Maryland, and she writes, Dear Ms. Vogelin, after looking at your website and reading the book, Anna Casey's Place in the World, I was wondering if the character of Miss Johnette Walker is based on yourself. Mm -hmm, yes. <laughs> We need to go back to this giant ah, bone that please. showed up earlier in the show. Miss Johnette lives in a house she calls the Bone Museum. And in that house she has bones and fossils and nests and feathers and this is one of her bones. This is a vertebra from a whale. It happens to hang over my kitchen door. And everything you find in that book is in my house with one exception the human skeleton. I do not have Edgar in my closet. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> well, you know, before we go any further talking about uh, further questions about Anna Casey, how about giving our viewers who might not have had an opportunity to read that one a brief overview? Okay, Anna Casey is about two kids, Anna and Eb, 
who come into the same neighborhood as Crossing Jordan as foster kids and what happens to them while they're there. Anna is really optimistic, Eb is really pessimistic. And the outcome is different for each of them, but it's a story of finding your place where you belong. We have another email question. This one is from Erin, who lives in Springfield, Virginia, and she writes, Dear Miss Vogelin, I noticed that some of the same characters that are in Crossing Jordan are also in Anna's Casey, Anna Casey's Place in the World. What made you decide to use the same characters? I missed them. Oh. When I finished writing Crossing Jordan, I had about six months where I was working on something else, and suddenly I thought, what are they up to now? And I decided to write a book that had those characters in them. There are, in fact, five books that are connected by a place and the same characters. And how, how do you decide when you're connecting characters from one book to another? Because that's, that's not usual. Mm -hmm. Usually we have characters in a book, and, or maybe it's in a series, but this isn't, this isn't a series. No. And so um, how do you approach deciding at what point in life and from what perspective, because for, uh, you know, Cass is the perspective in, in um, mm -hmm. uh, Crossing Jordan, but she's not telling the story in Anna Casey in the world, Anna no, Casey's place. No, absolutely not. Um, I decide who has the most interesting story, and what I like about it is each character gets to tell their own view of what's mm -hmm. going on, which means you might look really good in one book, and in another book someone might describe you as really bad. And so I get to show what many different points of view are like in this single place, the neighborhood. Tell us about one of the other characters that, that shows up besides Anna and Cass. I've got a boy named Justin, and mm -hmm. he's not really big in, in the earlier books. And then in My Brother's Hero, he makes a comment to his friend Ben. He says, hey Ben, do you ever wonder what it would be like to be dead? I swear I did not make him say that. He just suddenly said it. And I realized I had to write his book. I had to go back, see what I had said about mm -hmm. him, what would make him say something like this. So sometimes the characters go, hey, it's my turn. My turn. Well. Clayton from Flint Hill believes it's his turn. He has a call for you, a question oh, for you. Hi, Clayton. What is your question today for Adrian? Clayton, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I just wanted to know if anybody ever put you down for wanting to be a writer or, say, get a better profession or something like that. All right. Thank you, Clayton. Clayton, that's a really good question. You probably figured out that uh, being a writer, you don't earn a whole lot of money right away, and maybe never, that it's a hard job to do well at. So yeah, a lot of people say, why don't you get a better job than that? You'd do better. But this is the most fun job I've ever had, so I'm not changing. Thank you, Clayton. We have another call. Hi, tell us your name, and what is your question for Adrian today? Oh, who inspired you to become a writer? Who inspired you? Well, you know, my mom, mostly. In fact, when I was 15 years old, I realized that my mom was sending her stories off to publishers and no one had read them. And so I said, hey, mom, could I look them over for you and kind of help you edit them? And so I got into the business of writing by helping my mom to write. Also, anytime you read a book, it gives you a lot of inspiration to make you a writer. We have a call. Hi, Mariah. Do you have a question for Adrian? Yeah, I do. Um, in the book, Crossing Jordan, what is the main message you want to get out to the re readers? Oh, what a great a question. question. The main message that I want to get across is don't look at someone's color or their religion. Look at them. Get to know them. And if they're a worthwhile person, they're your friend, no matter what else they have um, that makes them different from you. Thank you. That's a good question. Yes, it was. We have another email question that I'd like to ask you. This is from W.R. Thomas Middle School in Miami, Florida. And they want to know, how long did it take you to be published, and what was your first published book? The first book that was ever published was Crossing Jordan. Now, that was not the mm -hmm. first book I wrote. The first book I wrote was about the zoo that I worked at, and it took me 12 years to write it, and uh, it didn't get published. Is this a good time to show? I would love show you to share. You brought with you some, some manuscripts brought, and all, and I think yeah. this would be fascinating for our viewers I to, to see the process. I to show you guys what it looks like. Okay, this is a manuscript, and as you can see, it's good and long. This book is right over there, Sister Spider Knows All. But if you read my title on this, it's not Sister Spider Knows All, which gives you an idea of how things change. My book is called Someplace I've Never Seen, and this is what happens to all books. Do you guys like being edited? 
Writers don't like it much either. These are all the comments for Crossing Jordan. There are 17 pages of them. Now here's the bad news about rewriting. It always makes the book better. And finally, this is a galley. This is what a book looks like just before it goes to the printer. And this is where you'll get a phone call from your publisher and they'll say, on page three, line five, too much space between the words. Could you just put another word in there? So here's where we're trying to make the book not only sound good, but look good. And all of this takes me about, it's about a year from beginning to end to do the whole process. It's a very complicated process. Yes. And what I'm hearing you say clearly is, don't give up and, and accept the, the assistance and yes. the edits and the proofreading. Yes. We have another call coming in, and Naomi has a question for you. Hi, Naomi. What is your question for Adrian? Um, which of your books do you like the best and why? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> That's always a hard one. <laughs> Please do not tell the other books this, but my favorite book is Sister Spider Knows All. I love them all, but that one, I just... There's a really crotchety grandmother in it who I like a lot, and the girl, um, the girl is kind of fat and not at all good at sports. I wasn't fat, but I was terrible at sports. I really like her. I wasn't very good at sports either. I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian, I'm curious, what is your write, writing routine like? And I know a lot of, of our viewers are watching that as well. Okay, I, I get a lot of questions like, do you write with a pen? Do you write on a computer? Mm -hmm. I write on a computer most of the time, but I don't think that's important. Mm -hmm. I really think what's important is whatever keeps you going. So what's, yes, what you're comfortable. Yes. So yeah. I write every day. In okay. fact, before I came over to the studio this morning, I was writing in my hotel room. Um, I'm you know on what? the. I'm going to hold that thought, and we're going to come back to your Great. routines in a minute because Noah is waiting to ask you a question. Wonderful. Hi, Noah. Hello. Um, I was just wondering which character would you most have come out of one of your books. Which, which character? Could you say that again? Would you most like to have come out of one oh, of your books? Oh, hmm. I love that question. All right, I may surprise you. The character I would most like to have come out of my books is Nana Grace. Nana Grace is the grandmother mm -hmm. in Crossing Jordan, and I love her. I wish, I wish I had a neighbor exactly like her, even a grandmother exactly mm -hmm. like her. Oh, that's a terrific question. You were telling me about the writing routine that you, that you go with and what your comfort zone is and that kind of advice when I interrupted you. So could we go back to that for a sure. moment? Sure. I just have a computer in one corner mm -hmm. of my house and I sit there and I work and every now and then I get up and walk around the neighborhood. Walking really helps writers. It mm -hmm. lets you think and it lets you see some things out on the street and then you come back in and you sit down again. Sometimes I'll sit and print the whole thing up because it looks different on paper than on the screen and I'll work on it that way. I go back and forth between the two but for probably the last more than 20 years, I've written almost every single day. That's terrific. Uh, I, I, I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about that, but first we have another call. Tell us your name and what is your question for Adrian? Um, my name is Truk, and uh, my question is, which character you, do you like better, Cass or Jimmy, and why? Oh, <laughs> that is so hard. They're both my girls, and I like both of them really a lot. Jemmy, I have to tell you, pushes me around. She tells me what she wants to say. She's like, I'm not saying that. I'm saying this. Write it down. So we have a different relationship. Cass, I understand a lot better. So I like them both, but for different reasons. Good question. Very Thanks. good question. We have a call from Stephen from Flint Hill Elementary. Hi, Stephen. What is your question? What was your favorite part of your book? Which book? Um, Crossing Jordan. Okay. Boy, that is really, really hard. Parts were really fun to write, like the race, because it was exciting. Mm -hmm. But I also liked writing the part where they went to the beach and Andy got burned real bad. Um, Andy was an old boyfriend I used to have. And you know, sometimes you get, you get your revenge even in your books. Thanks for calling. We have an, another email question. This is from Brian in Newport News, Virginia. And he says, Dear Ms. Vogelin, are you working on any new novels? Actually, writers usually have several things going at one time. Right now, I'm working on a novel about a pair of identical twins. It's actually a ghost story. One of them is alive and one of them is dead. And they are telling the story in turn. So I have a ghost narrator and a live narrator. And I'm also working on a book of poems called 
poems that hide under your bed, and it's all the things that are scary when you're a kid. You know, like that guy that's going to grab your arm if you put it over the side, the thing that's hiding in your closet. It's about that. I have a question for you that I have a feeling all of us have experienced at some time or another. Did you, have you ever experienced writer's block? And if so, how did you handle it? What did you do? My mother used to tell me that it didn't exist. She said, you can't always write something good, but you can always write something, which means don't go to the kitchen and get a cup of coffee. Don't pat your dog for an hour. Sit down, and after a while, your brain goes, OK, I'll come up with something. Here, write this. So you can, you can outfox writer's block. Oh, Just trick it. don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. Exactly. Good. We have a call from Florida. Could you tell us your name, and what is your question today? This is Beth Barrientos, and my question is, how many tries did it take you to get um, Crossing Jordan published? My, um, my agent says 16 publishers rejected it, and I believe him. Um, that's almost all the people who publish children's books. It took, it took a brave publisher to take that book because it was about race prejudice, mm -hmm. and my publisher, Peachtree, took it on, and I was very glad. Thanks for the Florida call. Thank you for calling. We have another call. This is from Sammy. Hi, Sammy. What is your question today? Hi. Um, what would you say to young writers around the world? What would you say to young to writers young around the world? young writers around the world. OK. First thing, do it because you love it. Don't expect to get rich. Pay attention to the people that you meet. Writers actually watch every single person around them. If you're in a line at the grocery store, you're looking for something to write about. Also, keep a journal. Make it be the place you store the things you might want to use later in your writing. And don't let your spirits get down. It's a hard job to, to get paid for, but it's a great job. We have another call. This is from Texas. Hi, tell us your name first, and then what is your question? Hi, I'm Parker from Aubrey High School. Hi, Parker. Uh, I, was, I was wondering if you use any religion in your books. That is a really good question. The book that I'm working on right now has a great deal of religion in it. And the reason is because having a dead narrator, I have to address the issue of where this dead soul is. And so right at this moment, I'm tackling the issue of religion very very head on, and it's interesting. It, it's giving me a lot to think about and a lot to consider. Thank you for that question. That's an interesting question. Um, any other authors besides your mom, who was such a, a force in your life growing up with reading and writing, any other authors influence you? I have to tell you that I was a terrible reader when mm -hmm. I was young. I was very slow at learning how to read. And so in terms of books that influenced me, the first one I can remember that I read myself was Island of the Blue Dolphins. Mm -hmm. And I read it, and I imagined myself alone on that island. So that book. But otherwise, they were all books that came through my ears. My mother read aloud a lot to us. Well, you gave some great advice to our caller. And thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. And I know everyone's learned an awful lot. That was the quickest half <laughs> hour really, of my it life. It went fast. Thank <laughs> you, Della. Thank you. Our guest today has been author Adrienne Fogelin. If you would like to learn more about her books, visit her website at www.adrianfogelin.com. And to check out our upcoming authors and programs, visit us at www.fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Della Kidd. Keep reading, keep writing, keep dreaming.